Hey, thanks, Jack. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, attending our webinar here on Microsoft Certification Updates. It's good to see you all. And uh, as you know, things have changed. It's not like Microsoft Certifications of the past, where we had specific tracks that we needed to follow for everything. So with the new wave of certifications that have came out uh, that were announced back in September, came some uh, some changes. Microsoft definitely threw a curveball at us. So let's go over those changes. There there is some confusing stuff, of, of especially around certification uh, recertification versus re-earning. So we'll go over that stuff. Talk about retirements. Talk about what's old, how it used to be, how it is today. And I already see some great questions. So we'll we'll get to those at the very end. Feel free to fire them in the uh, in the questions area anytime uh, you can think of one. But for now, let's let's get moving. So first thing we're going to do here is just talk about how things used to be. In the past, everything was technology based, right? So if you wanted to acquire an MCSC in Windows Server, then you needed to take a specific path. If you wanted to acquire an MCSC in SQL Server, you had to take a specific path or any of the other technologies. And that worked because back then, the last 20 years, technology didn't move at the rate that it does today. So Microsoft totally redesigned the MCSC and, and actually made it a little easier because we don't have this long track that we need to follow. But uh, it's, it's a little confusing because we don't recertify, we re-earn. So we'll talk about that here shortly. So how it worked in the past is you had to actually take a recertification exam within three years. That way, that, uh, that item on your transcript would stay in the active section. If you didn't take it, then it would go into the legacy section and, and it would essentially, uh, you wouldn't have that certification anymore or wouldn't show that you had it. So that was, and again, that worked great. It worked great, but it doesn't work in today's world because technology moves extremely quickly. And, you know, if I get a certification today and a couple of years from now, it's, it's, it's not going to look right. So the old way is transformed into the new way by giving us what are called the electives. Um, but first, the, 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 the really cool thing about this is that we can focus on a specific technology to really highlight our strengths and prove to people, employers, that you know we are certified in this technology today. We're current with it. Now, um, retirements. The biggest thing to know about retirements right now is that you can still, up until March 31st, get one of these older MCSEs or MCSDs. Um, but as soon as March 31st or July 31st hits, those are gone. Now, these, what these, uh, most of these certifications here that are being retired are recertifications. So for things like SharePoint and the, uh, the MCSE tracks for SQL Server and Windows, once the 31st comes around, those are gone and you won't be able to get them. So it's kind of neat that we get an opportunity right now, if you already have your MCSE that, and you're, you're close to those, then you could certainly add them onto your transcript by passing them before then. And now, Check this out right here. These are the most significant product retirements right now. That would be Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008. Those exams are going away, again, along with all of the recertifications. Now, let's talk about the new wave, uh, the new, what Microsoft changed back in September of 2016. Rather than, again, being technology focused, they are competency focused. So if we can get an MCSC uh, rather than getting the server infrastructure MCSC and specific, uh, focusing specifically on Windows Server, we can now get Cloud Platform and infrastructure, which focuses both on Windows Server and Azure. <clears throat> so this is the big change right here. So, oh, geez, I'm losing my pen here. There we go. This is the new change. Again, rather than having these specific paths, we only need to pass one elective exam. And then we get it for that calendar year. So we're not taking these big tracks with two or three exams. After we've already acquired our MCSA, rather than take those tracks, we just take one elective exam. And then we re-earn that certification for that year. Microsoft also introduced five brand new paths. We have four MCSEs and a new MCSD. So again, the most confusing part here is recertification versus re-earning. Back in the day, 
we were required to recertify every three years to keep our credentials active. If we didn't do that, we'd move into the le legacy section of our transcript. Now, when you get an MCSE, you have it forever. It's just marked with the year that you got it for that calendar year. So you don't need to, you don't need to recertify, although it gives you an opportunity to do it every year. Once you take one of these elective exams, you can never take it again. So the next year, you would take a different elective and you would get another line item on your transcript for that technology. So it really just gives us an opportunity to refresh every year and to add more line items onto our transcript to prove that we are competent and experts in that technology. So it's just, a, again, just a really a, a better way to prove to the world more granular that we are certified in this specific technology rather than this broad range of technologies. Now let's talk about those five, those five new certs. And, and I'll kind of give you some examples here as well, which will, which will really help you understand how this stuff works. So the first new path we have is the mobility path. This focuses on like Windows client and enterprise mobility, BYOD type stuff. And uh, generally your career path here will be for traditional desktop support technician or enterprise management. So for this path, to get your MCSA in Windows 10, you would need to pass a 698 and the 697. That'll get your MCSA. Then you just need to take one elective out of this pool. Passing any one of those will get you your MCSC for that calendar year. So if we were to take this right now, we would be an MCSC for mobility in 2017. So you just need to pass one of these. And then once you do that, you cannot take that exam again. The next year in 2018, you would take another exam. And then once you pass that in 2019, and this list isn't static, this list continues to grow. And every year, Microsoft is going to add more into this pool of electives. So you won't exhaust this pool anytime soon. Now, the next one is cloud platform and infrastructure. This is really where the, the, uh, the, the MCSEs for Windows Server and for Azure come into play. So this is the big one. This was like the old days, the MCSE was just server infrastructure. Now they've broken it out again to cover the cloud as well as server. And, uh, and this one really focuses in on cloud administrator, system administrator, cloud architect, computer support specialist, all that kind of stuff. So one important note about all this is the MCSAs aren't changing at all. MCSAs are still MCSAs. So you'll get your MCSA in either server 2012 or server 2016, or if you've already have your 2012, you want to go up to server 2016, you'll take the, the, uh, the 743, which is the upgrade exam. And once you have either of these, or of course the, uh, the new one here, the MCSA Linux on Azure, or the MCSA Cloud Platform, if you have any of these, all you need to do is take one of these elective exams and you will be an MCSC for Cloud Platform and Infrastructure. So certainly they've, they've, they've lowered the barrier to get an MCSE. We don't have to take these specific, specific paths, but again, you'll just need to keep them. You don't even need to keep them refreshed if you don't want to, but it gives you the opportunity to do it every year. So again, you get that extra line item on your transcript. So it'll prove to the world that you are current your current MCSC and you, and it'll have a nice history of all those years that you were an MCSC. Now we've also got the productivity, the MCSC productivity certification. This uh, again requires an, uh, an MCSA, which you can either use your server 2012 MCSA or office 365. I imagine they'll add server 2016 into this as well, but uh, then you've got a big pool to choose from down here. Again, just keep in mind, these lists are not static. They're going to change. And a lot of these are, still in beta they haven't been released yet so eventually uh, over this this year a lot of these will will be released uh, into production we'll be able to take them this is the sql server path data management and analytics this one um same kind of deal here you can get your mtsa in 2012 or 2014 get it in 2016 and then well they've got mcsas by the way they've broken out there what they did is they took the MCSEs for SQL Server and they turned them into MCSAs. And then to get an MCSC, you just need to take one of these. So to give you an example, let's say that you already have your MCSA right now in, in one of these, say SQL Server 2012 or 2014, for instance. If you have this right now and you wanna get the old MCSE, say for data platform, then all you would need to do is take one of these electives, right? So, um, well, actually for the old MCSE, you, you would need to take one of these right here. Uh, where is it? 70. Here, here it is. These two. Oh, no, nope, that's the wrong one, too. 
It's actually, uh, here it is. Yeah, 764 and 765. So if you took one of these, you would already, because this is a very interesting thing here, you would you would get your old one. It's 464, not 764. That's the new one for 2016. This is what I was looking for right here. So these two got you the old MCSC data platform. So, and considering they're electives, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone here because this, until March 31st, will allow you to get that old MCSC and passing this will also get you the new MCSC for 2017 for this year right here. So that's why I'm, I'd say we're kind of in a, an interesting time right now until March because you can take one exam and get multiple certifications for it. Even though, you know, eventually that exam will fall off the list because, because these are gonna get retired and, and they'll be old. Now the final path here is for the MCSD, the app builder path. This is for development application developers, web developers to build web services, desktop and mobile apps, that kind of thing. So get your MCSA in web applications, possibly a universal Windows platform, and then any one of these electives will get you your MCSC. So what it all comes down here, all really comes down here uh, to is that all the MCSC and MCSD certs that released before 2016 will be retired. So they are gonna be retired and they're gonna be inactive and inaccessible come again March 31st. All certifications earned prior to that will remain valid until the technologies are required. That's when they'll, they'll fall off the list. And, and another really important thing to know here is very few exams are actually getting retired. It's really all of those recertification exams. Those are all going away. And also, these are, this is kind of cool. Get a badge now. They've got this badge system, digital badge that you can share on social and through sites. And to, just to, to prove, it's like the old school pins that we used to get. Well, they digitized them and turned them into badges. Kind of neat. Any questions? So that, that's a great question. And I, I think that's gonna depend on where you currently stand. If you already have an MCSA in server 2012, and, and you're, you're, you, know, you, you think you can pass the two exams that would get you the old MCSE relatively quickly, since you only have about a month to go, then I would say go for it because it'll go onto your, it'll just be another line item on your transcript that'll show you that you are qualified in this older technology, right? So it'll broaden uh, how, how long you've been in tech, this specific technology for. If not, then I would say just wait for 2016. Um, because it's going to be much easier to acquire your MCSE, MCSE for, uh, for 2016 since you only need to pass one exam. Hopefully that helps. I see another good one there. If you fail an elective exam, can you retake? Yes, you can retake. Same, same rules as before uh, as far as retakes go. Yeah, the, the new method, uh, Horace, is, is it's actually kind of neat. A lot of people are complaining that, you know, it's a money grab because now we're going to have to certify more. But at the same time, I think it, it, it's, it's serves to us better because it gives us a transcript that really highlights exactly what we specialize in. And, and it gives us an opportunity to build that transcript more rather than have just an MCSA or MCSA E on there for three years. Now we can build it and it'll really start building a, a resume that we can show to people. And uh, let's see another good one there, Steve. Uh, no, I don't believe you can upgrade from 2003 to 2012 MCSA. You will need to start over. Uh, you can upgrade right now from 2008 to 2012 um, and then 2012 to 2016, just doing the upgrade exams. But uh, no, you'll have to start over when you're that far back. Uh, let's see, another good one from James in there. Must I wait here before taking the next exam? No, no, you can take as many electives as you want. You just can't take the same elective over again. Once you've passed a specific elective, you're done with that one. Um, but I would actually, I mean, it, it all depends on what you wanna do. Taking multiple electives is great because it shows, you know, for that year that, You've, you've got experience in both of those. Um, a lot of people were worried that if they exhaust that list of electives, that they wouldn't be able to take it again. But like Microsoft said, they are gonna, they're gonna blow up this list. There's gonna be a large list of electives and nobody in their right mind is gonna be able to eventually pass them all in one year. Uh, let's see, Phil had a good question there. Is there any plans for MCSE mobility electives? Yeah, we're gonna get through the, uh, the MCSAs first. And then we're gonna look at uh, what people want as far as electives go and certainly cover some of the more popular ones. Uh, the MCSE standards, Nicole, take effect uh, on the, uh, the 31st of, of March of this year. So you got a little bit of time if you wanna to try to get an older MCSE, but um, for most of us that, you know, we might as well just start, start working towards the electives. And you can go do that right now. You can take one of these electives 
for some of the more popular ones. Again, a lot of these are still in beta. Um, I, th I believe there's one or two MCSE electives that are available right now, like the security one, 70 744 is available. Um, and there's one other one I'm, I'm, I would think off the top of my head, I don't remember what it was though. No, oh, and, and that's another great question, Jose, right there. I, we get that a lot. You're in the middle of 411. Do you think MS will try those exams soon? No, the MCSAs are not going anywhere. Nothing is being changed. They're gonna be around for a long time to come. All these changes are purely around MCSC. And, and again, their whole goal for that, their whole thinking behind it was to move to this model that will uh, help us out because it'll give us a, a better opportunity to, to number one, recertify every year. Not recertify, there's that term that, that I shouldn't be using, re-earn every year, but just give us, uh, and employers who look at our transcripts more, uh, a better idea of what we're, what we're certified and what we're experts in. Oh, um, where can you find this stuff? The roadmap, Raphael, um, you can find this. Uh, Microsoft's learning website has been restructured. It, it's harder to actually find the old stuff than the new stuff. The new stuff is great and it's really easy. They have a nice wizard. If you just go to microsoft.com slash learning, really nice wizard. So if you wanna get an MCSC, then choose your MCSC and it'll tell you the exams you must pass. Most of them, again, on the server side are MCSA. And then it'll show you all the electives and say which one do you want to pass or which one do you want to take. And then you can go and view the actual exam page for those electives. So yeah, just head to microsoft.com slash learning and it'll, it'll show you all this stuff. Really, really nice. They did a good job with the redo. Let's see, Matthew, another good question there. I've just done my 70-410 exam planning on doing the 411, 412. Should I continue with the 2012s or wait and do? Um, you should continue with the 2012s. Yeah, absolutely. And what, I, what I've been telling people is if you're already going down that path, why not finish it? And if you want to upgrade to an MCSA, say in server 2016, then you'll just need to take the upgrade exam, which is the 70-743. So again, MCSAs aren't going anywhere. So everyone's still going to need to have those because they're prerequisites to anything MCSE. Oh, Eric's got a good one there. How will CBT Nuggets focus on covering the ever-expanding list of electives? Yeah, same as always. We'll, we'll probably do it based on requests and popularity, and uh, and we'll we'll uh, we'll know soon enough what the popular electives are. We could probably just I could probably just tell you right now that you know they're going to be things like security on the server side, and uh, and database development administration on the on the SQL side. Although BI is getting popular, and I imagine that we will hit that sooner than later. Well, let's see. Will the seventy dash four ten change? No, no, it won't. That's going to stay the same. Uh, that's server 2012. That's well, it's not going anywhere. That's going to stay the same for a long time. Uh, yeah, Nicole, I agree. Yeah, I'm surprised PowerShell isn't a certification, but you know what? It doesn't have to be because it's everywhere. It's in every every exam they they uh, they've been putting out since 2012. So, uh, Clive, the um, the SharePoint certifications have moved into productivity along with Skype and Exchange. Um, all of those have moved into productivity. So you'll either get your MCSA on the server side or your MCSA on the desktop side. And then th there's an elective in there uh, that you can take for SharePoint that will prove that you know, you're an expert in SharePoint for productivity. So yeah, there's no specific SharePoint paths anymore. They've all moved into the electives for the MCSE and productivity. Yes, you can, Mark. You can take a, uh, a 2016 elective. A 2012 MCSA is one of the prerequisites, either 2012 MCSA or 2016 MCSA. It doesn't matter which one you have. Then you can take any of the electives for the, uh, the Cloud Platform and Infrastructure MCSE, and you will, you will have that MCSE. Well, hopefully uh, this cleared up some of the confusion around it. Again, it's, all they're doing is taking those old MCSE paths and turning them into electives. So it's a, it's a much more flexible way for all of us to prove that we are certified and experts in specific technology. And our, our transcripts are going to get a lot bigger over the years, which is great. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys.